Hi, this is the third in a series of Magic Eye 2 videos that I made and put on my YouTube channel. In the first video, I put together a kit that I got on eBay that cost about 8 bucks and was an audio uh, VU meter. In the second video, I played around uh, putting together an op amp driver and interfaced it to the Raspberry Pi so I could control the tube from the Raspberry Pi. In this video, I'm going to interface the Magic Eye tube and the op amp driver to my PC and write a Python program that implements a CPU and network monitor using a pair of Magic Eye tubes. And in the fourth video, I build an audio spectrum analyzer with six tubes and use it to uh, visualize music while I'm listening to it. I'm going to build a CPU and network monitor using Magic Eye tubes. So on this side, we're going to have a Windows PC. It's going to talk USB to an FT232 uh, FTDI chip breakout board, which will then talk I2C to our MCP4728 digital analog converter. Uh, two outputs will come out of that and drive an LM358 op amp, which will then supply grid control signal to one Magic Eye tube there, the other Magic Eye tube there. Let's take a quick look at the experimental setup. So over here is the FTDI chip. It's on an Adafruit FT232H breakout board. Uh, this board converts USB to I2C. So we can see the uh, micro USB connector coming in here. Then I've uh, soldered a header and ran out the uh, 5 volt ground um, SDA and SCL pins. These go into my uh, DDA converter board. I showed this board in one of the other Magic Eye tube videos when I was interfacing the Magic Eyes to the Raspberry Pi. So this is an MCP4728 digital to analog converter. On this side is the I2C lines that control it digitally. And on the output side, there's up to uh, four analog outputs. We're only using two of them. Uh, right here is my uh, op amp board. Um, this is featured in the, uh, the other Magic Eye tube videos. And this uh, board, what it does is it takes an analog signal in one side and it inverts it and amplifies it. So 0 to 2 volts comes in from the A to D converter and out goes 0 to minus 15 volts to the Magic Eye tubes. Over here is the two Magic Eye tubes. We will display uh, CPU performance on the left and network performance on the right. Back here is my 250 volt power supply and my uh, plus minus 15 volt power supply. We need uh, positive and negative rails to run the, uh, the op amp. Okay, let's uh, try this out. So on the left we have CPU performance, on the right we have network. Um, so these, I have not exactly calibrated these other than to say that when we get around 10 megabytes a second, this, the network one on the right will be fully maxed out. When we get around 100% CPU, the CPU one will be fully maxed out. As I've shown in the other videos, these things are not really linear. They're kind of logarithmic, but you know, I don't know that it's a pure logarithmic curve, so we'll, we'll be able to see some stuff happen on it. Although, uh, you know, you can't really you can't get an exact measurement from it, but you can see the, the sort of performance trend. So right now, um, I've got the focus set on the tube, so you can see them clearly. I don't know if you can see my monitor that clearly, but uh, I do have Task Manager open, and we've got no network and about 2% of uh, CPU being used. If we launch a web browser, load up YouTube, And then let's try uh, the top 10 most unfaithful movie adaptions. So we can see, you know, there's a burst of network as it buffers, um, as it buffers data that comes in. So there's another burst of network. Uh, there's definitely some CPU utilization. So CPU has gone up to, you know, 6% or so from the 4% we had a minute ago really isn't taking a whole lot of network to uh, buffer in this YouTube video. Uh, 
um, let's try something else. I have this program that I wrote that displays my uh, surveillance cameras and it uses up a lot of network and uh, CPU. So launching that. Oops. Let's move that over here. So launching that, we can see that you know we've got some CPU. Um, it's up to about seven percent in Windows, um, but the network has gone way up. So we're pulling about uh, thirty-seven uh, megabits per second, about uh, four and a half megabytes per second on the uh, on the network, which has brought this network tube up to you know like three-quarter scale or so. Let's uh, kill the uh, video windows. Let's try something else like uh, launching a VMware virtual machine. So this is an XP virtual machine. It's pretty lightweight. Let's launch is probably not going to use a whole lot of CPU. So CPU it bursts up to about 20% or so and then comes back down as soon as this virtual machine is idle. Let's pause that virtual machine, small burst as we're pausing it and uh, then goes idle. I have World of Warcraft. Um, it's actually had it loaded over here in the other monitor. Let me hit the play button. You know, we can see World of Warcraft is taking some CPU. Let me actually zone into a zone so we can see what a game is doing. Uh, it's brought my CPU utilization up to around 20%. World of Warcraft, not, not a huge user of a network. So there were actually uh, World of Warcraft is loaded. I'm flying around over here on the other monitor. Exit World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is still shutting down. There it's uh, exited. Let's try uh, So I wrote this program a while ago to do uh, CPU burn-in. It computes primes. I can set the number of threads that it'll run. So let's tell it to run two threads. That should consume, you know, at least at least a full CPU, depending on how the hyper-threading works. Um, there's four CPU cores. There's four CPU cores in my machine. Um, each core can do uh, two threads with hyper-threading. So starting this up on two threads should consume at least 25%. Yeah, so we're up, it, it's using like around 30% of the CPU. You see that in the CPU graph. It's completed. Now let's try uh, four threads. Four threads is using uh, about 55% of the CPU. A little over half. It's completed. Now let's try eight threads. This ought to max out my CPU. So, yep, CPU utilization uh, maxed out. Windows is showing 99%. Bar graph there is maxed out. Let's try downloading a large file from someplace. Raspbian Jesse. This would be a download Raspbian for Raspberry Pi. Let's download it as a zip file. Yeah, so we're currently downloading uh, Raspbian at about 9.8 megabytes per second. So we can see, you know, the network graph over here is showing us um, all of the network bytes that are coming in. It's a bit uh, 
bursty. I don't think it probably really is that bursty in real life. This probably is just something to do with the way I'm measuring it. So is it still down? Yeah, it's still downloading. Let's cancel that Firefox window. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.